Yo guys, I heard you like nightmares. So let's look at one. This thing, I call it a nightmare because it took me the better part of yesterday to get this thing running after I got it in the mail. It is pretty much a flop in Microsoft's eyes. I say pretty much what I mean it is. And Microsoft have pretty much washed their hands of this poor little thing. So the only way you can actually use this is with unofficial support by very nice Zune community members who are dedicated to keeping this thing alive. It isn't like the iPod where even Mac OS Big Sur and Monterey still continue support for the iPod even going back to the first generation. Apple is proud of their legacy and they're gonna just keep on supporting it. Whereas this, no, Microsoft forgot about it like I think into 2010 maybe. I forget when they actually can't. Actually no, it was 2015 that they finally just completely canned all everything for the Zune, I believe. So getting one of these running in 2021 can be a bit of an endeavor and it's not exactly for the faint of heart. So given that, there's also another problem too. Say you want to firmware restore this thing because, you know, Microsoft has wiped their servers of this thing's existence. Well, you can't. Unless you do a little bit of a workaround because the Zune software, it wasn't very smart. So you could easily fool the Zune software by adding a thing in your host files to point resources.zune.net to a website called zuneupdate.com. So if you need to restore it, it'll just ping zuneupdate.com and zuneupdate will be like, here's your firmware, have fun. And you'll see why that's relevant in a bit because I actually did upgrade this thing a little bit. So very nice, but unfortunately the problem is that that's only gonna be alive as long as you know the person maintaining it can afford to do so. And I mean, given it's gonna be relatively low traffic, it's probably not that bad. But still, a, everything on the internet is a finite resource. I feel it could disappear tomorrow and you wouldn't know where to get it. And well, thankfully we have archive.org and such helping to stop that from happening. But still, you can still get the firmware updates yourself uh, and get them locally and actually run your own web server locally, but that's complicated and just pointing your host file at zuneupdate.com is you know much easier. Also, the UI is a bit of a cluster. This is actually the updated UI. This is the same UI that Zune 80 and 120 got, because this is a Zune 30. And you'll notice if we go music, artists, cults, for example, because they were just convenient. If I want to go to play a specific song, this kind of gets in your way. It isn't just, hey, you click the song and it plays. You have to actually tell it, hey, I want to play that song. You have dedicated back buttons, play pause buttons, which is actually kind of nice. Actually, I say dedicated when in fact they are on iPods as well, but I'm so used to them being integrated into the click wheel that, well, I totally forget and you know, take something like the third gen for granted. So let me show off this third gen real quick. This is actually gonna be in a future video once I get the fixings for it. Just to show you how the UI flow goes on an iPod. We start out at the menu here like we do on a Zoom. Music, artists, and we'll scroll down to cults again. I wanna listen to some cults. And here's all the songs, you know, let's play one of their more known ones. Boom, there it goes. You're playing the song, and if you want any more context, you just hit the center button. I find this iPod so weird because like, people are like, and Apple needs to get on the capacitive button gang, and you know, they already were, many years before Android ever existed. Funny that. But, this is not about the iPod, this is about the Zune. The nightmare, only gets worse when we get back to the software because, well, I'm actually gonna switch to screen report recording for that part, so I'll see you guys on the other side with regards to that. Okay, so I'm gonna sound a bit different, obviously, because we're using screen capture here for the software end of things, but you're going to want to install the Zune software, and there's a package floating around that's a full offline installer because. Some of the ones you'll get are online installers, which actually download the files from Microsoft servers, which 
as we went over earlier, Microsoft washed their hands of the Zoom, so it's not going to work. So, once you get that all installed up, and it will work on Windows 10, in fact, if I run Winver here, we are actually on 21H1, the most recent version of Windows 10. However, you're probably going to want to run this either in a VM or on bare metal uh, with Windows 7 or Windows 8 or an earlier version of Windows 10, because in one of the big updates, Microsoft actually removed some codecs that the Zune software requires to convert to Zune format. Well, I say Zune format, but I mean a format that the Zune can actually play. So if you don't have that, you're going to be up the creek without a paddle. So what you need to do, I mean, assuming you, you have a library that doesn't need to be converted, it should be fine. But in my case, I had a handful of files that just wouldn't copy because it wanted to convert them because it was convinced that it couldn't work. So unfortunately, if you're coming from iTunes, I do not know of a way to bring in playlists or something. However, I do like that it's very, very, very smart about what you give it. So in this case, I have it pointed in a dedicated Zune library because the library on this computer, which is my custom built, is actually just my archive library that has literally every piece of music that I've acquired over the years. And I want a more focused library for this. So you can point it there and it's pretty aggressive about picking up new files to get added. And that's something I really do like about the Zune software. I can point it at something, and it's pretty set and forget. So the one thing you are going to want to change, and this is something that tripped me up so very bad, we come to device here, and we go down to conversion settings. By default, this is going to convert every single file that is over these bit rates, at least over this bit rate. And this is going to suck because it is going to murder your audio quality. So in this case, since I actually upgraded my Zune to an 80 gigabyte uh, drive, I don't care. I don't want it to convert. All my library is 320k AAC. It should be able to play that back just fine. So turn this off. <laughs> just d first thing you do, turn this off. Because you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> When you go to listen to it and everything is just compressed and i know some people are like well you know you can't actually hear it well no no yes you can this converts it and i believe wma i could be wrong it's really bad <laughs> it sounds so horrible so going back and we can also come back and you know look here i don't have it plugged in and i'm not going to because it's actually not synced to this computer it is synced to a Windows 7 machine I set up. And if you get the re if you get the reference, you're an awesome person. But what's funny is it will always come up as a 30 gigabyte here. But when you connect it, there'll be a bar along the bottom that'll show the storage, and that actually reflects the 80 gigabytes you do have if you do decide a similar upgrade path for your Zoom. I just thought it was really funny because it is basically, the capacity is the model number for the most part. So they're always going to call it a 30 gigabyte Zune, <laughs> which is funny. But yeah, if you try to run this on Windows 10, actually this even works on Windows 11, so I hear. It's going to work for the most part, but if it happens across something that is going to require conversion, it's probably just going to hang up its hands and be like, no, I can't do that, instead of actually trying. Now I have heard you can install QuickTime, to get around that, but I actually, if I drag this here, I actually do have it installed. It doesn't work. So stick to older Windows 10 or stick to Windows 7 or Windows 8. That's my advice. So we've navigated the nightmare that is the software and a little bit of the explainer behind why it's such a nightmare. Because, you know, again, it's been forgotten. However, there is one nice thing about this because you would think it's proprietary for the most part, and it's actually not. So if we open this up, it actually comes apart like an iPod. I did take out some screws because this thing does have screws, and I'm probably just gonna leave them out because this thing holds itself together very nicely even without the screws. And unfortunately, my screws are getting stripped because these are cheap screws. 
but there is normally a little surround here and unfortunately it went and decided its plan it needed it and it flew off somewhere and uh, I know where it is I know roughly where it is I have to go dig it out but for the purposes of this we're just gonna forget about that but it does come out if you just get a little teeny 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 flathead screwdriver in there and just carefully pry up it'll come out so this thing does open just like an iPod you get a very thin opening tool in here and just gently pry up and you can see we are opening a seam right there and because this thing is plastic all around like the fifth gen iPod this thing comes apart super simply just like that now what we're going to do is we're actually going to lever this off from the top because unlike the iPod the headphone jack and hold switch do not come off with the back panel they are on here and as we can see, this is the back panel. I don't know what happened to this soon once upon a time, but it actually had some yellow schmoo in here, and I'm not sure where that came from, but it cleaned up and it still works. So I don't know, again, what happened. Now, if this looks familiar, that's because it is. This is an iPod 5th gen battery, and this is a thick 5th gen battery so this thing is cross compatible with iPod batteries so you don't have to worry about you know your Zoom battery going flat on you and not being able to actually replace it because these are plentiful these are so plentiful especially with the advent of dank pods it just reinvigorating the iPod market you can find these easy and cheap so don't worry if your Zoom 30 decides to go bad on you with regards to the battery now the Zune 80 and 120 actually use a very different battery and it's soldered in, but at this point, to me at least, I used to consider that a very bad thing. But you know what? I've actually gotten decent at soldering, so I really don't consider that to be a bad thing anymore. So the hard drive, we've got four screws kind of in each corner. And if we take these out, I'm using a JIS bit for this. I believe a JIS double zero or either a zero or a double zero when you're torquing these back down you do not need to go tight because these screws again will strip very easily and if you strip your screws you're going to be a very sad panda so don't do that we get this open and these are taped together these are two separate pieces the battery holder and the hard drive bracket and you're gonna want to keep these together because structurally this does keep the hard drive in place combined with the back panel of course but if we pull this slightly off here lever this upwards there's your hard drive and as you can probably tell this uses the very same hard drives that iPods do Now I can already hear some people probably firing up their keyboards. Man, why don't you drag a one that thing and put an SSD in it? Well, that's kind of the problem. I like to say that these things were very nice because you could actually swap in iPod parts, but that's not exactly the case, unfortunately. Yes, the batteries work. The hard drives also work because this is actually a hard drive from a sixth generation thin iPod with an 80 gig drive in it because these zooms I believe can only go up to 128 gigs which is fine for me because my music library is at most 25 gigabytes and that's from building it over decades <laughs> so I'm not too worried about that but if you have a bigger library you may be worried either way the problem is this does not work with any of the iPod flash mods does not work with the iFlash, does not work with the cheap CF adapters, as far as I know. The only SSDs that will work are the 1.8 inch full hog SSDs, the ones that are like you would get in your old MacBook Air when that was an option. So the only company that is making new SSDs for this thing is Kingspec. And the problem with that is I actually was pricing out a 128 gig drive for this thing. They are $90. Compare and contrast to a flash mod for something like this. A flash mod for this, which I do have on the way, and that's going to be the subject of this thing's video when it comes out, 
is I, I paid 15 bucks for the hardware to flash mod and then probably another 15 bucks for a 128 gig SD card to go into it. So we're looking at 30 bucks there. But it, no, 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 no. If we go even further with that, let's get one of my good old buddies here, the one that I originally built up, my balls to the wall fifth gen. I spared no expense on this thing. The iFlash I bought came to like, like 30, 40 bucks. And the SD cards, I mean, I didn't have to splash out as much as I did. I got an iFlash Dual, which is, again, not necessary for the Zune because it's capped at 128. So I spent like a good 40 bucks on an iFlash Dual, and I spent a good, what, like 30 bucks on two 128 gig SD cards. So we're looking at like 60, 70 dollars at most. And this, again, is just for a 128 gig SSD, which I believe is actually just an M SATA bridge board, if I'm remembering this correctly. But it's the only SSD that works because these things are very picky about what you put into them. And it's really kind of a shame because it, it sucks because the hard drives suck, especially in a portable media player like this. Back then, you kind of accepted that that was going to be a thing that you had to be careful about because flash storage was prohibitively expensive. But in 2021, it's kind of a really crappy thing. And I would like to flash mod this thing at some point, but I'm not going to blow 90 bucks on it. And I tried looking at lower capacities. Those are like 50 bucks. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> so what is going to happen is this thing is gonna just get hard drives because hard drives are cheap and plentiful. In fact, this 80 gig drive, I believe I could get for under 20 bucks on eBay. Even actually I could buy them from Elite Ops Leap because that's why I actually prefer to buy my parts. Not sponsored, but he's pretty good at what he does and I have never had an issue with his stuff. So I could get this stuff for cheap rather than blow 90 bucks on an SSD that, you know, is from some, well, I don't think King Spec is exactly no name anymore, but it's still relatively cheap. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together. And, and again, this thing was built for these batteries because it just kind of sits in there very perfectly. All right, and let's put the battery back in. And you know, I've noticed that even though the connectors look the same, I've never had a Zune break its battery connector on me. If it did though, I'm not I'm not gonna be chuffed about it because I mean I know how to repair them now, so I'm not worried. So only thing to really keep in mind here, and I think I just told it to boot no, hold is on, thankfully, is just make sure that this is in the right position and you're gonna lever it back on exactly as you took it off, making sure that the front latches on like that because we don't want to break the headphone jack. And just like that, crunchy. So I think I am actually going to put the screws back in because this did come off a little easier than I really wanted it to. Yeah, and then if we just unhold it, it'll boot. And that's pretty much it for this video. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and well, tune in later for when my parts arrive for this guy because we are going to have a lot of fun and not just with this one but we've got multiple that we're going to be having fun with because we're going to be having a big old ipod repair-a-thon because i can't find my other fourth gen basically we're going to be part swapping between oh there it is my photo my mono and the third gen so till next time i'll see you guys later